Art Lusky, your narrator for today's graduation ceremony. This ceremony is conducted by ROTC Cadets, marking the successful completion of basic camp. Cadets from college and universities across the nation will celebrate the successful completion of 31 days of challenging training. The graduating unit today is the second regiment of basic camp. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Cadet Caitlin Kubad from the University of Houston. The color guard is comprised of cadets that were hand-selected throughout the regiment. They are under the direction of Drill Sergeant Jeffrey, Jeffrey Owsley from the 108th Training Command. Also participating in today's ceremony is the 81st Regional Division Band under the direction of Chief Wild Stratton Robert Slade. The drum major for today's ceremony is Sergeant First Class Billy Eath. The cadets of the 2nd Regiment are now formed on the field. Each regiment has had the honor of having bestowed upon it a namesake. This namesake is a remembrance of a general who has commissioned to the Army ROTC program and has achieved great success throughout their career. Second Regiment has had the distinct privilege of honoring General Hugh Shelton. Henry Hugh Shelton graduated from North Carolina State University in 1963 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Textile and Engineering and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the infantry branch. Shelton served two tours of duty in Vietnam with the 5th Special Forces Group and with the 173rd Airborne Brigade, followed by a series of command and staff assignments. Following the Gulf War, Shelton commanded the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg in his home state of North Carolina. In 1993, he was given command at the 18th Airborne Corps. Shelton led the Joint Task Force responsible for Operation Uphold Democracy in Haiti in 1994. In 1996, Shelton, a Special Forces soldier, was promoted to the rank of general in the position of Commander-in-Chief of the United States Special Operations Command, SOCOM. He was the first graduate of the United States Army Special Forces Program to command the United States Special Operations Command. General Shelton's final assignment was the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from 1997 to 2001 where he oversaw the planning of the Coast World War and the initial invasion into Afghanistan. In honor of their completion of basic camp, the cadets from General Hugh Shelton Regiment will be receiving a three-gun salute in the form of a cadet cannonade. The host and review officer for today's ceremony is Major General Donna Martin, Commanding General of the Maneuver Support Center of Excellence and Fort Leonard Wood. She is accompanied by the regimental attack boss from Lieutenant Colonel Elvis Coronado. In a moment, the commander of troops for leading units to attention and present arms. For your units to attention and present arms! Company! Attention! Present arms! Company! Attention! Present arms! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the running honor to Major General Martin and remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain Major Kenneth Milliken. Being in the field, the road marchers, 
obstacle courses and the dreaded gas chamber. Thank you for being with them and encouraging them in the midst of their pain and frustration. Thank you especially for the refreshing popsicles. They never thought a popsicle could taste so good. You have given them memories that will last their lifetimes. As the cadets return home today to rejoin their families, we ask for safety in their travel. We ask that you help them transition back to their schools to study hard this school year. We ask that you give them determination to return to advance camp. Keep them and all of us safe as we seek to do your will with our lives. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Remain standing during the firing of the cadet cannonade. We ask that military personnel in uniform maintain their hands fully until the completion of the cadet cannonade. Look at 
Cadet Creed was adopted to instill in Army Cadets the values that are critical for successful performance. Cadet Emerson Brock from the University of Tennessee Chattanooga will now recite the Cadet Creed. The Cadet Creed! I am an Army Cadet! Soon I will take an oath to become an Army officer committed to defending the values which make this nation great. Honor is my touchstone. I understand mission first and people always. I am the past, the spirit of those warriors who have made the final sacrifice. I am the present, the scholar and apprentice soldier enhancing my skills in the science of warfare and the art of leadership. But above all, I am the future, the future warrior leader of the United States Army. May God give me the compassion and judgment to lead and the gallantry in battle to win. I will do my duty. Leadership excellence, sir. Turn to lead. Financial Services Award is presented by Mrs. Jessica Blaisdell. The award is given to the cadet who demonstrates the leadership traits necessary to encourage teamwork, improve unit cohesion, and reinforce mission accomplishment. The award is presented to cadet Raquel Rivas from the University of Nevada, Reno.
Military Order of the World Wars Award is presented by Lieutenant Colonel Retired Johnny Allen. The award is presented to the cadet who best demonstrates the ability to apply experiences and capabilities to solve complex tactical problems. This award is presented to cadet Shaman Nettles from Austin Peay State University. The Military Officers Association of America Award is presented by Lieutenant Colonel Retired Johnny Allen. The award is presented to the cadet who demonstrated superior dedication to duty by accepting accountability for self and assigned unit through the employment of team members while applying the fundamentals of leadership. This award is presented to cadet Alexander Gamir from Elizabeth City State University. The AUSA Warrior Ethos Award is presented by Mr. Mike Pesco. The award is given to the cadet, achieving the highest marksmanship scores. The award is presented to cadet Ryan Howell from the University of Mississippi. Forces Bank Performance Award is presented by Ms. Nicole Shoemaker. The award is given to the cadet who best demonstrates respect for other cultures and people by effectively utilizing the training scenarios to gain a better understanding of cross-cultural competency as they relate to a complex environment. This award is presented to cadet Cassandra Taylor from Columbus State University. The Reserve Officers Association Award is presented by Lieutenant U.S. Navy Steve Wilson. The Army, the award is given to the cadet who is the best reflection of characteristics of comprehensive soldier and family fitness by demonstrating resilience, the potential for enhanced performance to cope with adversity, better performance in stressful situations, and to thrive in life. This award is presented to cadet Joshua Milliman from Auburn University at Montgomery. The Society of American Military Engineers Award is presented by Ms. Tara Grove. The award is given to the cadet who is enrolled in an engineering major and possesses observably improved problem-solving skills. This award is presented to cadet Elliot Clements from the University of Cincinnati. The Bold Leader Spirit Award is presented by Mrs. Kelly Barron. The award is given to the cadet who best demonstrates the ability to apply appropriate motivational techniques, inspirational leadership, and demonstrates the spirit of a leader. This award is presented to the cadet William Collins from the University of Central Oklahoma. The USAA Warrior Spirit Award is presented by Major General Retired Bill Barron. The award is given to the cadet that best demonstrates the Army profession, ethics, and officership while best exemplifying the warrior spirit. This award is presented to cadet Alec Wilson from Georgia Military College. The Armed Forces Services Corporation Award is presented by Colonel Retired Don Bartholomew. The award is given to the cadet who best demonstrates physical readiness. This award is being presented to cadet James Varney from Stone Hill College. The National Guard Association Award is presented by Major Kevin Wallen. 
The award is given to the cadet that demonstrates the most improvement in physical and mental preparedness in the advanced ROTC curriculum. This award is to the cadet Harsh Parani from the University of Texas at Austin. The CST Coin of Excellence is presented by Lieutenant Colonel Emily Oliva. The award is given to the cadet who best demonstrates the most improvement in physical and mental preparedness for the advanced ROTC curriculum. This award is being presented to cadet Kyra Sorcharski from the University of Delaware and cadet Evelyn Haynes from Towson University. At the completion of the ceremony, today's awardees will return to the field for individual congratulations and photo opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving our awardees another big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, the guest speaker for today's ceremony, Major General Donna Martin, Commanding General of the Maneuver Support Center of Excellence in Fort Leonardwood. and will set their lives up for success in so many ways. 
These future leaders stand here on the brink of a great accomplishment, ready because of your enduring love and support. Thank you for everything you've done and will do. To our future leaders, congratulations. Thank you for answering the nation's call to serve and for supporting our nature's, nation's future, future leaders. Welcome to your first military graduation. After 31 days of training in the most extreme conditions, you are moments away from accomplishing the first milestone of your military journey, and I'm sure that it is one you will always remember. 31 short years ago, I was a cadet embracing the grind at Fort Bragg, just like you've done here at Fort Knox. This summer, the five fundamentals you learned in your MS-1 and MS-2 years were tested here. These will form the foundations for the basis of your success in our military. You also learn and have your camaraderie tested. You work with peers from many different colleges and universities from across the nation. Weary of one another in the beginning, you soon learn the value of trusting your battle buddies. And that peer leadership is the hardest form of leadership. You will fondly remember your squad leaders and team members who helped you succeed here at Fort Knox while you battled the ticks, the bugs, and probably even the occasional snake. And just like biological family, some will become your cherished mentors, trusted peer leaders, and best friends. You endure a lot together already. You learned truth leading procedures, drill and ceremony. You planned and executed capital missions at the squad level and survived your first after action reviews. You experienced forced hydration as you and your battle buddies endured and conquered the heat and humidity. And as you leave Fort Knox, doing basic rifle marksmanship, map reading and land navigation, and first aid training drills in your sleep, you learn to have confidence in your equipment. You will use all of these skills when you return from your last year of college and well into the time you become an officer in the United States Army. So as I close, I want to leave you with a couple of things that I've learned. These are not about Army doctrine, but rather life TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures. First, take a moment to reflect on all that you have accomplished and think about what is yet to come. You still have lots to learn about the military. The best advice that I can give you is to listen to your non-commissioned officers. When you compare their years of service and experience to yours, there is no comparison. They will not lead you astray. They want your success as much as you do. My second piece of advice is to ask questions. And while everyone says there is no dumb question, there really are. Which leads me to my third piece, third piece of advice. Do your homework. The military is a profession. It requires continuous self-study and hard work. Do the work. Your soldiers deserve the very best leadership. Be that leader. You are the next generation of guardians of our founding principles. You will soon be entrusted to defend the values we all hold dear. And I know you are ready. Your lives will forever be changed in a positive way for choosing to be a part of our greatest team on earth. And most importantly, you will have a unique opportunity to have a strong, positive impact on the lives of so many. I want to commend you all for choosing to serve our country. This is a decision you will never regret. I've served in the Army for over 31 years now, and never have I heard anyone say, I'm sorry that I joined the armed forces. But I cannot even begin to count the number of times I've heard people say, the military is the best decision I've ever made. It is truly unlike any profession in America and unlike any other job. We take people with little or no experience, but with a huge will to learn, a will to serve, who have, had, who have a desire to be a part of something greater than themselves, and a belief that they can accomplish anything they set their minds to, and we put them on this great team. We are forever bonded in our mission to defend this great country. 
I am proud to serve with you in the most powerful and professional armed forces in the world, and I wish you all the best of luck in all your future endeavors. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. 